April 1st, 1943, Thursday. April 1st, 1943, Thursday. Dear Kitty, I'm really not April Fool and see the date, but the opposite. Today, I can easily quote the saying, misfortunes never come singly. To begin with, Mr. Kufius, Kufuis, Mr. Kufuis, the one who always cheers us up, has had hemorrhage, has had hemorrhage of the stomach and has got to stay in bed for at least three weeks. Secondly, Eli has the flu. Thirdly, Mr. Vossen is going to the hospital next week. He probably, he has probably got an abdominal ulcer. And fourthly, some important business conferences, the main points of which Daddy had discussed in detail with Mr. Kufuis. Mr. Kufuis were due to be held, but now there isn't time to explain everything thoroughly to Mr. Crailer. The gentlemen who had been expected duly arrived even before they came. Hey! Even before they came, Daddy was trembling with anxiety as to how the talks would go. If only I could be there. If only I was downstairs, he cried. Why don't you go and lie with one ear pressed against the floor? Then you'll be able to hear everything. Daddy's face cleared. And at half past ten yesterday morning, Margot and Pim... Two years are better than one. Took up their positions on the floor. The talks were not finished in the morning, but by the afternoon, Daddy was not in a fit state to continue the listening campaign. He was half paralyzed from re remaining in so unusual and uncomfortable a position. I took his place at half past two. As soon as we heard voices in the passage, Margot kept me company. The talk at times was so long-winded and boring that quite suddenly I fell asleep on the card the cold, hard linoleum floor. Margot did not dare to touch me for fear they might hear us, and talking was out of the question. I slept for a good half hour and then woke up with a shock, having forgotten every word of the important discussions. Luckily, Margot had paid more attention. Yours truly, and Frank. It's not the silence, it's not the violence of the mini that scares me, but the silence of the mini. Freedom is a necessary, vital component for us to be fully human it's a prerequisite you must have freedom you're you must have freedom because i must have freedom you cannot separate your freedom from mine a prisoner cannot agree to a fair and square contract they're a prisoner they're forced to agree to whatever a fair and square a fair and square contract can only be agreed to by two free men one must always oppose the system of evil always a man dies when he refuses to stand up for that which is right, it is never too late to do the right thing. The right time to do the right thing is always now. The right time to do the right thing is always now. And that Anne Frank, Anne Frank said, isn't that wonderful that to start to do good, you could just start to do good right away. Our lives begin to end the day we become silent about things that matter. The true revolutionary is guided by great feelings of love. Democracy cannot consist solely of elections that are nearly always fictitious and managed by rich landowners and professional politicians. What kind of man doesn't stand up for truth and justice and righteousness? That's not a man at all. That's some kind of beast. That's some kind of cancerous, impetigo beast. Who needs to be re removed from society. Nothing in the world is more dangerous than sincere ignorance and conscientious stupidity. The hottest places in hell are reserved for those who in a period of moral crisis maintain their neutrality. There, there's a time when silence becomes betrayal. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish them but to fulfill them. Matthew 5, 17.